Hello and welcome to my podcast. I am Jessica and this is my podcast all about knitting and I am a knitting pattern designer so it will be all about my designs which is pretty much just all of my knitting these days. Um, I had pre-planned an intro before I uh, sat down here and I'd completely forgotten it so Maybe next time. <laughs> well, it's pretty uh, cloudy here today, so it's kind of dark in here. I have my mood lighting going right here, my candles. I made these um, with beeswax using old jars. I followed uh, the wooden nests, a wooden nests tutorial on how to make candles and um, I just used some old pesto jars that I had. I'm pretty pleased with myself for uh, making candles. They make a, a nice warm glow when it's really dark. And today is just a gloomy day. So, we will just get started talking about knitting, why don't we? I have a finished object to show you. I'm wearing it, as you may have noticed. This is my Abloom pattern that will be coming out on the 28th. It is, I don't know what date it was, it was just Valentine's Day. So I think maybe two weeks, a little less than two weeks till this pattern comes out. February 28th, 2020, in case you're watching this in the future. So it's gonna come out on the 28th. And I just got it done this week. Isn't it pretty? Can you see the, see the flowers? Isn't that pretty? It's kind of, the light's kind of bad there. You maybe you can see better like that. So it's got this lovely stranded floral design around the shoulders and uh, it's just perfect for this time of year when winter is just going on and on and on and on and will not quit. So this is a bloom. Top down in the round stranded color work yoke. There's nothing on the hem. There's nothing on the cuffs. I did some longer cuffs. Um, those are three inch cuffs. I've done um, longer cuffs on some of my later sweater. There we go. Later sweater patterns because I just really like how it fits. I like a cuff that fits nice and snug. And a lot of my older sweaters that I've worn for a long time, the cuff just gets completely stretched out because the ribbing doesn't doesn't hold its integrity for forever. It eventually will just stretch out, even if you, you know, rewash and everything, it just eventually stretches out and I don't like it. So I like to do a nice snug cuff now so that even when it does stretch out all of it, I feel weird doing this. Um, you know, when it does stretch out, it's not super loose and baggy, so. We know this is weird. Nice snug cuff on the sleeves. They're nicely fitted, but they're not super tight. There's a little bit of ease in them, but they look real nice and a clean fit. So this one, I, uh, I recommend it's worn with two to four inches of positive ease. I think I've got like three or so in the chest right now on this one which fits really nice. It's, I think it looks really good. I wouldn't recommend going for an oversized fit on this one. It's, I designed it to fit a little bit closer. So I'm really happy with this one. Really pleased with how it turns out. It's really pretty, it fits really nice. It's really cozy without being over too overly warm. So it's nice for these days when it warms up in the house and it's not so, brutally cold anymore, but it's still not warm enough to go without a sweater. You might notice these little uh, dimples up here. So when I was designing this, I thought it would be best to do the whole sweater with only one kind of increase. And I use a right lifted increase in the color work because I found that that's the most invisible increase to use in color work. So I thought I would do a right lifted increase through the whole sweater. And even though these little dimples were showing up as I was knitting it, I thought it would just block out. It's just gonna block out. You know blocking fixes everything, right? Um, 
So when I got down below the underarms, because I blocked it about an inch under the underarms, I realized that they weren't going to block out. <laughs> they were just going to stay there, just little dimples, but I, I was not about to rip the whole thing back and start over. I changed it in the pattern so these increases up here at the top are make one left now so they won't they won't show up there won't be these dimples when you make it but i was not about to rip all the way back to the beginning and start completely over just to change the kind of increase that it was so there's make one left up here and then when you get down into the color work it's a right lifted increase again which i think it's i think that will work okay. I think people will be able to understand that perfectly fine. I don't think it'll be too, too difficult to do, so. It's knit and fingering weight yarn. I used Quince & Co. Finch for mine. The main color is Adwin. I, I honestly don't know if I'm saying that right. I should look up a pronunciation guide. Adwin is a really nice um, heathered oatmeal color. It's nice and warm and neutral. And then the flowers, the blue that I've used is bird's egg. It's a really nice, really nice blue. I really like blue. So there we go. That's my finished object. Like I said, this pattern is going to come out on the 28th. Um, so if you want to make sure not to miss it and to get a discount, you'll need to, well, actually, I don't know. That, that will work because I'm planning to upload this video on the 28th as well and my newsletter will have already gone out but if you do sign up for my newsletter you'll get a coupon for 20% off to use on it um, so yeah sign up for my newsletter you'll get a coupon for 20% off that you can use on this pattern if you want to buy it. If you're already a newsletter subscriber, you will get a discount for newsletter subscribers when this pattern goes out. So that's what I do with my newsletters. I just um, send out emails when I have new patterns and the subscribers get a discount, an exclusive discount. So that's, if you want to sign up for my newsletter, please do. I'll put a link for it below. So that's this sweater. It's I started this sweater right after Aiden was born, so it's taken me, he's almost four months now, so it's taken me three months to make this sweater, which is quite a while, really, to be working on just one sweater, I guess, but it is fingering weight, so it takes a while, but in the end, it's worthwhile. I haven't had very much time to knit lately, because, you know, babies and all. So my first finished object. My next finished object is something for Aiden. There we go. It's just a very simple, plain sweater. It's got a round yoke. Very, very simple. Very, very easy. Very, very suitable for somebody who's just doing their first sweater pattern. So the reason I made this one is because I had this sweater quantity, baby sweater quantity, of Quince & Co's Organic Heathers, Chickadee Organic Heathers, it's their sport weight yarn, and I was going to hold it together with, um, or I was going to do it together with sage, their color uh, had a skein of sage, but it didn't work out, and the colors were too close, so my little color work sweater idea kind of died and then it, the green yarn became sweet sage which is already out and if you've watched my podcast you'll have seen that already but I still had this gray yarn and I really needed to do something with it because I didn't want just three skeins of gray yarn sitting there forever and ever that I had nothing to do with and so I decided to do something very simple very simple and very easy and this yarn is really soft and it's got a little bit of a halo. I don't know if you can tell, but it's a really, just really soft. And it's got a little bit of a halo. So I thought that really the best place for this yarn to be used was in a stockinette sweater. 
So I designed a very plain, simple little stockinette sweater. This one is called Wood Smoke and it is created in sizes three months to a 70 inch chest circumference. That's the finished circumference of the sweater. So there's 20 sizes in it. So there's literally one for every single person. And so it's very simple, very easy. Would make a marvelous, 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 marvelous. I said it again, a marvelous first sweater for somebody who's, who's not made, um, who's not made a sweater before and wants to try one out. Cause it's very simple. If you know how to increase and knit in the round, you'll be able to do it just fine. So, and actually it was so nice to just have just something super duper simple to work on. I knit almost all of this while I was nursing Aiden. So that was my nursing project. And then I finished it up while we were doing school. Yeah. I homeschool my older kids. So this was my school project for a while, which I can't do anything really interesting or complicated while I'm doing school. So anyway, this is wood smoke. This is the 12 month size, which he's not even four months yet, but the child just grows like a weed. So I decided to make size 12 months so that he can actually wear it. So, yeah. It just grows like crazy. I'm going to have to switch him out to the next size. And I just switched him to a new size right after Christmas. And the child just grows like crazy. Which is good. I shouldn't complain about that. Even if he is a giant four month old. So this is the baby sample. So this is a sport weight yarn, which I'm working at a gauge of six stitches to the inch. And this is the adult sample, which I'm doing my very first fluffy sweater. Look at that, look at that. Can you see all of that fluff? Oh my goodness, so fluffy. Amazing. This might become a problem. <laughs> but this is um, my sample of wood smoke. And I'm making this with Autumn and Indigo's non superwash merino base, which is fingering weight, held together with her silk mohair. And I'm using the color Heatherstone. And I'm just past the short rows for the neck. I should pull them needle through so I can show it off a little better. So I'm just through the short rows for the neck. So I'm trying to hold it in such a way that it makes it a little easier to see what's going on here. So here we go. It's not much to show off right now. Just started it this week. Just got the yarn for it this week. Very very excited about this one. I just can't wait to wear it because it's just so, it's just so fluffy. Mm. I'm gonna have to stop, the baby's crying. <coughs> okay, I'm back. He went back to sleep on his own. So, thank goodness, thank goodness. Back to my fluffy sweater. So, I wanted this sweater to be very simple, perfect for a first sweater, but I also wanted it to be something that you could use a wide variety of yarns with and come out with your own special, unique take on this pattern because it's really plain. So it can be, you know, just that perfect canvas to do something really fun with, with your yarn. So you can use, you know, a wildly speckled one or, you know, mohair and, or just, a single strand of sport weight. I'm not sure if it will work for a DK weight. It might be kind of a tight gauge for a DK, but you could try it if you wanted to. So this will be mine. I'm hoping to get mine knit down to below the underarm to make sure that I like the way the yoke fits. And then I'll start the test knit, hopefully have this one out. Um, 
late spring, maybe early summer, which may not be the best time of year to release a mohair sweater, but oh well. Um, yeah, so this is gonna be super simple, super calming. I actually am having a lot of fun knitting on this because I have a baby, I'm very tired, so I don't have a lot of energy for um, something super complicated. And it's just nice to just, just sit down and knit. And then it's also perfect for when I'm nursing, when I'm doing school, when I'm doing, you know, anything that requires my attention. I can just knit and just go round and round and round. And that's, that's just the perfect thing for my stage of life. So, it's mine. So, my husband says this is brown. He won't hear otherwise. So what color do you think it is? <laughs> I think it's a dusty mauve. It's a really pretty color. Anyway, you look at it. It's a really pretty color. I'm really enjoying it. I'm really looking forward to wearing it. I think I'm going to really love this sweater. So that's my, my first work in progress to show you. And then I have, I have three collaborations going on, I guess right now, since I have the yarn for them, um, that I'm working on this spring. This is a collaboration with Autumn and Inga, Indigo. So she sent me her yarn for me to work this pattern up in. Um, and then I'm also doing a collaboration with Primrose Yarn Co. And she sent me her two new yarns. So she's got this one, this one, which is her new fingering weight, which is 50% Merino, 50% Shetland that she sent me. I chose the color Wester, which is a really pretty green. I'll show you the tag so you can see what it's made of. I'm not sure if you can read that when my fingers are in the way. Maybe it's upside down, I can't tell. <laughs> anyway, it's half Merino and half Shetland. And I chose the color Wester, which is this gorgeous green. I mean, just look at that. There we go. You can really see it. My sisters are texting me from my phone over there. Um, so, it's this gorgeous, gorgeous green. I love green, as anybody who's been here for any amount of time knows. I love green, and this is a really, really pretty one. It's got some tonal variation, and it's got some darker green in it, maybe even a little bit of darker gray, um, mixed with this really just beautifully vibrant green. It's just gorgeous, it's just gorgeous. I'm really liking this yarn. This one, it's really, not really rusty. It's got a little bit of rusticness to it because it's Shetland, but I don't think it's gonna be itchy at all. I've held it against my skin, most sensitive on my neck, and I, I don't feel any prickles at all when I hold it against myself. So, yes, I'm swatching right now. I just got this the other day, so I'm swatching. You can see I'm working on a lace pattern. Well, I guess it'll go this way if I'm doing it from the top down. Working on a lace pattern. We'll see. We'll see if I like it in the end. Um, so yeah, I'm planning to do a pullover with this, and I'm hoping to have it out sometime this summer. So oh, I made a mess of my yarn when I pulled the tag out. So I've got this to work on, which I'm really excited for. It's just a really, really nice yarn. Got really, it's really bouncy. I really like bouncy yarns. Even if I'm just doing um, stockinette, they're a lot easier on my hands. If something that doesn't have any bounce in it will make my hands hurt after a while. So this one's really pretty. This one is gonna, this one's gonna be gorgeous. So I'm excited for that one. Swatching right now. And then her other yarn that she sent me is her new um, House DK weight. I've had this one for a little bit longer. It's so soft. 
It's so, 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 so soft. This is, um, let me just pull the yarn down here because I don't want to misspeak. So it's 70% merino, 15% yak, and 15% silk. So I'll do that again so you can see the yarn tag. Anyway, this one is so soft. It's so soft. Um, and drapey too. It's gonna, it's gonna be really nice. So I've got these colors. I should probably say what colors they are. So this is the Lost Souls, this dark gray that I've got. And it's a, like she's a really good hand dyer who's known for her really bright and happy and vibrant colors. Um, so these may be a little bit different than her usual colorways, but they are really nice. This is a dark gray, but it's got some blue in it. Like little tunnel patches of blue. So this is the Lost Souls, and then the Days of the Phoenix, which is really fantastic. I don't know, burnished copper, burnt orange, somewhere in that category. And then my main color that I'm using is um, silver and cold, which is this one. It's a heathered gray kind of maybe a touch of oatmeal to it but they're really pretty so I'm going to do color work with these three these two are my contrast colors this one is my main color I've already swatched I already know what I'm doing with it I've already got the pattern half written and graded and I'm pretty well on my way with this one. I don't want to show you too much of it because it's not going to come out until October. So that's quite a long ways away and some people steal designs so I'm a little hesitant to show it off this much in advance because it's, a, I mean this is a chart that I came up with on my own, it's my own idea. I don't want somebody to, to steal it in the meantime. So. Sneak peek, which is just yarn. So these are going to be a sweater that come out in October. I'm doing something fun and new with the construction method, um, which I'm really excited to try. Uh, so I'm not gonna tell you too much about it, but I'm excited to try it. It's gonna be a little bit different, but it's still gonna be very simple, very easy to do, and very easy to knit, very easy to wear. So I'm pretty excited for this, which Orange is a little bit out of my uh, color comfort zone, wouldn't you say? But when she posted the picture, like I was asking her to put different yarns together and so I could see. I originally was kind of thinking I would go with this green and then she put these three together and I was like, oh yes, that one. That one's the one I want. I think it's going to be really pretty. The swatch is really pretty. Uh, I'm really excited about it. My husband just tried to name it the Eye of Sauron. I'm like, that, that's, that's a little off-brand for me. I like the Lord of the Rings, but it's a little off-brand for me. So, I think that's everything I'm working on right now. Just a whole, whole pile of sweaters up right now. So, some very exciting stuff I'm doing this spring. And, yeah, I think that's everything I have to show off to you. Hopefully you have a wonderful weekend. And like I said, this sweater that I'm wearing right now should be coming out today. This is the day that I put this up. If I manage to follow through with my plan, which doesn't always happen, you know, kids and all that. So yeah. I will put links to these yarns that I've shown you down below so you can find them easily. Um, I guess really the only sweater pattern that there's going to be a link for is this one, a bloom, so you can go and get a copy of that if you want to. If you would like to, I'll also put a link to my newsletter sign up so you can sign up for my newsletter and like and subscribe to this video if you enjoyed watching it. Thanks for being here. Bye!